The disturbing images of ISIS terrorists we've been seeing recently have one thing in common. The jihadists are almost always male. But that doesn't mean women aren't being lured as well. Girls are being enlisted to become wives and mothers, dubbed bedroom recruits because they're drawn right from their homes. It's recruitment by social media and it's hard to stop. And as Vashi Capello's reports, girls are being lured from right here in Canada. Can you hear me, yeah? Yeah, can you hear me? What you're watching is a Skype call. Would you meet me at the border or is somebody gonna meet me there? Yeah. It's with a man claiming to be an ISIS fighter living in Syria. It's what you do. Um, you say that, you know, you're gonna have a, a weekend sleepover where you basically start from Friday evening. He's talking to this woman well, who he believes is a 15-year-old Canadian girl from Edmonton. So can you get on a flight to Calgary? You know Calgary, right? Yeah. When you get to, get to the flight on Calgary, you fly uh, to Germany, uh, to Frankfurt. He's coaching her on how to deceive her parents, get on a plane and travel to Turkey and then Syria to join ISIS. You go to Istanbul. What what airport should I go to? Is just the one in Istanbul? Is there more than one? You never left the country? I've never left the country, but I've flown before. But he doesn't want her to join ISIS as a fighter. He wants this 15-year-old to be his wife. So that's, that's how it works. And uh, when I pick you up, I'm going to be picking you up as my wife. If this man was luring an underage girl in Canada, that would be a serious crime. He could be arrested, charged, and convicted. But he's not in Canada. He's an ISIS fighter in Syria, luring a teen online, and Canadian laws can't stop him. But uh, my biggest concern is um, you getting to uh, get out of Istanbul uh, without your parents going crazy, mm. you know? How dangerous is a guy like that? Well, but if you can get a whole weekend to you, that's good. It's, it's quite dangerous for, for younger girls in the West. OK. The flights that you look for is the shortest flying time, you know? We took the recording of this Skype call to Amarnath Amrasingham, an expert in foreign fighters. He's shocked to see the video, but says this scenario is actually not surprising. No, it's very easy for a young girl in Canada to set up a Twitter account and be in direct communication with fighters overseas. That's what this 15-year-old girl did. If we get married, we would have our own house, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll... But she isn't real. She's actually a 16 by 9 producer. Um, is there a house that I go to when I'm in Turkey, or...? You're so young, I can't really have you stay in, in, in a house. But this girl is real, and she's only 13. We found her on Twitter, communicating with members of ISIS. We wanted to talk with her. She agreed to meet with a 16 by 9 producer, and we captured it all on hidden camera. She's in Canada. We can't say where. We'll call her Farah. Have you watched any videos from Donna? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. 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 It's like my favorite. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I just like, I'm just in love with it. Like, I can, I, I think I've memorized lines. Yeah. Farah says she got interested in ISIS last fall, watching videos that glorify ISIS fighters. <laughs> brothers were relentless in their attack. A lot of these girls are attracted by the, the stories of these guys and their machine guns and their or and their AK-47s and their life in Syria and, and, you know, standing up for what they believe in and doing what they believe in. So I think there's a kind of attractiveness there for a lot of these girls. At 13, she's talking to violent jihadis online. <laughs> Grown men known for bombings and beheadings. But far from being afraid of them, she's gushing. I think there's this kind of heroism to this whole thing. There's an adventurism to this whole thing. Um, and there's a kind of cool factor to this whole thing that, um, you know, the same way that we, same way that teenagers might be attracted to 
uh, extreme sports or may be attracted to Justin Bieber. Um, it, it, it's a kind of, uh, there's a kind of sexiness to ISIS at the moment. Amarnath, an expert on foreign fighters, watches ISIS fighters online. He knows who the main recruiters are. We showed him 13-year-old Farah's Twitter profile. We wanted to know if this underage girl was at risk of being lured overseas to join ISIS. When you look through her social media profile, what was the impression it left you with? It told me that even though she's 13 and kind of new to this whole thing, um, that she quickly became plugged into the main actors and quickly became plugged into the main narratives of the Islamic State and, and kind of fit right in. Farah didn't tell us if there was a particular ISIS fighter who was telling her to come over. And while she says she's considering going to Syria, she has no plans to get married. I really care more about you. I really have interest in teaching kids about Sharia. She may not care about marrying a fighter, but if this 13-year-old Canadian girl is convinced to get on a plane and go to Syria, she might not have a choice. It's often said that once they're there, you kind of have to get married, and, and that's a narrative that's put forth by a lot of girls that are over there already. They say, don't expect to come here and lead a single life. Um, so expect to get married pretty soon, expect to take on your family duties very soon. How can you not say that's the truth? In Canada, marrying an underage girl is illegal. Luring her overseas is human trafficking. Is this girl a victim? Yeah, I think she's very much a victim. I don't think at that age you're kind of fully equipped to make independent decisions, um, and, and especially choices like traveling overseas and, and joining militant movements. Um, and so she's very much a victim of circumstance and very much a victim of, of ISIS propaganda. Sometimes that propaganda comes with a female face, women recruiting young women all in the name of sisterhood. Their online names use the Arabic word um, meaning mother of. Um Hussein, Um Laith, Um Darda. All Western women living and recruiting in Syria. Um, one of them is a Scottish woman from Glasgow. Her name is uh, Um Laith, who runs a fairly elaborate uh, website where she has advice for pages and pages about you know, how to make the journey uh, to Turkey and how to make the journey to Syria, what to bring. Uh, then there are other women uh, like Sally Jones from the UK uh, who goes by Um Hussein uh, on Twitter, um, who's, you know, very much plugged into a lot of the uh, women and girls on, on their social media pro profile. They communicate on Twitter, Facebook, instant messaging apps and blog sites like Tumblr reaching out to young women, convincing them they're needed as wives and mothers for the future of the Islamic State. And then you come along and you say, hey, you are a nobody there. You can be a somebody here. It's exciting, you know, that you're part of uh, building a nation or a state in it, and you throw some religious terms in there, and all of a sudden you think that it's, it's got some righteousness or some favor with God uh, incorporated with it. And, and so much for the sacredness of marriage there, you know, like, you're, you know, you don't even know who you're going to marry. You just want to marry some, you know, a boy, you know, like some, you know, and, and, and you're right. I know what we're seeing more and more is that, yeah, these young girls aren't just expected to stay at home and produce babies and make, uh, you know, bread and, and, and toast all, all day, but they're expected to either sacrifice themselves, be suicide bombers, uh, or to engage in an armed conflict. Next, answering the call. Is there anything that when you're making the journey you're supposed to bring? I don't know. Can you bring some cash with you? To be an ISIS wife. February 17th, 2015. Three teen girls from East London board a flight at Gatwick Airport, bound for Istanbul. Their plan was to get to Syria to join ISIS. The girls caught on Gatwick's CCTV cameras. Khadiza Sultana, 16. Amira Abbasi, 15. Shamima Begum, 15, using her 17-year-old sister's passport. Right away, British police released these pictures to the world in hopes someone might find the girls and return them home before it was too late. 
A few days later, these images, broadcast on Turkish television, showing the teen girls boarding a bus to the Turkish-Syrian border. If they made it into ISIS territory, a rogue state, it would be nearly impossible to get these underage girls out and home to their families. The story of Khadiza, Amira, and Shamima has been headline news for weeks. But in Canada, a very similar scenario unfolded last October. Three teen girls, ages 15 to 18, left Canada to marry ISIS fighters. The story barely made a ripple. Uh, so, so, so from what I understand, that their recruitment came via the internet. The belief is that someone, you know, over the internet, so no, not somebody in Canada, um, basically sold them, you know, that this is wonderful, this is your obligation, it's blissful here, it's righteous here. Hossein Hamdani is a lawyer and member of the National Cross-Cultural Roundtable on Security. He was called in by the RCMP to liaise with the girls' families. He's one of the few people who knows what happened in this incident. What we know of them, of them is uh, two sisters and a cousin, Somali background, living in Brampton. They're in high school, but they're, they're intending to drop out of high school. Uh, one of them was recruited online and then convinced the other two that this is, this is something that they want to do. And so they did. In Canada, a minor isn't required to have an adult's consent to get on the plane, leave the country. In no time, the three teens were in flight, en route to Istanbul, the last stop before getting whisked into ISIS territory. Back at home, it wasn't long before the girl's parents realized something was horribly wrong. The parents realized that they were missing, uh, contacted CSIS and the RCMP, were able to track them on the plane to Istanbul. The RCMP called Turkish authorities, who were ready and waiting when the girl's flight arrived in Istanbul. And when they got to the Istanbul airport, that's where the Turkish authorities captured, arrested, returned, deported them back to Canada, and, and they've been uh, here ever since. The teen girls, their apparent plan to marry ISIS fighters thwarted, found themselves back on Canadian soil and facing the RCMP. Again, they're, what, 15, 16 years old. You're young and you're stupid and you're foolish and you make mistakes, and, and, I, and I think that these girls weren't ideal ideologues. They were just girls who made a mistake and maybe fully didn't appreciate the consequences of that mistake. They were young girls probably wrapped up in the excitement of it. The RCMP won't comment on the incident and whether anything illegal was done, but Canadian law can't do much to prevent girls from going to the Islamic State to become wives of ISIS fighters. In this case, at least two of the Brampton teens were underage. It's illegal to marry a minor in Canada. But even if they were of legal age, it's not a crime to marry a criminal, whether it's a bank robber or a terrorist. Is it illegal to marry a terrorist no. in Canada? No. So facilitating a terrorist activity or participating with a terrorist group or instructing an individual to engage in a terrorist activity, those are all crimes. Uh, having social relations with someone who may engage in a terrorist activity or, or who may be participating with a terrorist group is not a crime. Craig Forsyth is an associate professor at the University of Ottawa Law School. He's also an expert in Canada's anti-terrorism laws. In the course of those social relations, you may do something in support of your spouse that amounts to facilitation of a terrorist activity or particip participating with a terrorist uh, group. So it's not about the nature of the social relations, it's about your conduct. 16 by 9 went undercover to find out what possible conduct a wife of an ISIS fighter could get drawn into. We, we literally live for the deed and we die for the deed, you know? That's exactly the aim over here. We set up a test. A Skype call with a man claiming to be an ISIS fighter in Syria. So, um, so we live for al-Akhirah. He thinks he's talking to a 15-year-old girl in Edmonton. He wants to marry her and tells her how to get to Syria and what to bring. Well, can you bring some cash with you? Uh, like what kind of cash? Like what currency? It's always good to have uh, um, extra cash to just fall back on. He asks her to bring extra cash to Syria as backup. Fall back on in case you know, anything goes wrong. 
Now listen carefully to what this ISIS fighter advises next. I'll also buy you, uh, you know, um, a handgun, you know, for your protection, this kind of thing, you know? Okay. He wants this Canadian teen girl to carry a handgun. He tells her women in ISIS territory carry them for protection against enemy attacks. Do most so, um, people carry handguns? Yeah, yeah. And not only that, he tells her women in ISIS carry more than just a gun. She'll need a suicide belt, too. Yeah, uh, the women here, they carry handguns, they carry the belt, you know, uh, for protection. I mean, not, not that it happens anything, but, you know, it's always good to be protected, you know, because we always have enemies, you know. As Craig Forsees says, marrying a fighter is not a crime for any Canadian woman. But using a gun or having a suicide belt, suddenly wife becomes terrorist and criminal under Canadian law. The risk is, of course, that it's not just come over here and be the spouse, it's come over here and be the spouse and carry, and carry the munitions or uh, take up arms or do something more proactive in terms of your own personal behavior that crosses that line into terrorist conduct or terrorist activity in its own right. There, just like anyone else, those individuals would then be uh, amenable to prosecution, assuming you get your hands on them. And that's the problem. Once inside ISIS-controlled territory, a rogue state, there's nothing in Canadian law that can get these women back or prevent them from leaving in the first place. And as 16 by 9 found out, female recruitment to ISIS is a phenomenon that is percolating here in Canada. In this hidden camera video, a 13-year-old and her 15-year-old relative tell a 16 by 9 producer that they want to go to Syria to join ISIS. And um, how you going to become illegal? And the doors will open, he drove all cool. So he's making it look further. Yeah, that's just, that's just scary. We're going to be stuck in the, in the West. That's what I'm like, you know, really like worried about. So we, I've had dreams for like, two years now that, that we were already there. And I, like, I got it. Next, Canada's move to stem the tide. We will criminalize the promotion of terrorism and also shut down the website. Every time we shut down a website, another two will pop up. Women and girls are the latest wave of recruits to answer the call of the Islamic State. The message is to come and help build a new nation as wives and mothers. Well, like, you know, I used to follow people that like, just ran to me. Like, I, I, I was always interested. Like, sometimes they do cheat to know God and, like, who says SS and stuff like that. Um, it is not interested in weapons and stuff. And then I started to, uh, like, you know, I looked for the little cops and I was like, ready to try to help my Recruitment is happening online, on computers, in girls' bedrooms. This 13-year-old told a 16 by 9 producer she's considering making hijra, or the migration to ISIS territory. <laughs> 16 by 9 wanted to find out what laws Canada has in place to stop girls like this 13-year-old from traveling to ISIS territory. We went to Ottawa to interview Public Safety Minister Stephen Blaney. What can Canada do to prevent women and girls from being recruited by ISIS? We need first to prevent those radicalized uh, individuals from being radicalized. Then we have to prevent them from traveling and respond to an eventual uh, threat that has materialized. But prevention did nothing to stop an estimated 15 Canadian women from traveling to join ISIS so far. And prevention did nothing to stop the three Brampton teenagers who got on a plane and headed to ISIS territory, getting as far as Istanbul. Thankfully, um, their family uh, was able to contact um, services, and the girls were stopped on their flight as they landed in Turkey. 
brought back. Hussein Hamdani is a member of the National Cross-Cultural Roundtable on Security. One of the problems of having ISIS on the front page of every paper, and one of the problems of having, you know, our government talking about the fear that ISIS is and the, the threat is to a small demographic of people, it's kind of sexy, it's kind of interesting. But what young recruits might think is sexy, the government wants to make criminal. The federal government has a new law up its sleeve, Bill C-51, better known as the Anti-Terrorism Bill, announced just months after the attack on Parliament Hill last October. These measures are designed to help authorities stop planned attacks, criminalize the promotion of terrorism, and prevent terrorists from traveling abroad and recruiting others. How specifically, though, does C-51 prevent a young girl or a young woman from being lured by someone in ISIS, perhaps over in Syria? We don't have the legal authority to shut down a uh, website who are promoting terrorism uh, targeted. So that's the first thing of the bill. We will criminalize the promotion of terrorism and also shut down the website. But shutting down websites, we found out, is much like trying to hold back the waves. When one user profile gets shut down for objectionable content, another pops up a few days later. This Twitter user is on her sixth profile. And this one is on a tenth. We can't shut down every single website. Every time we shut down a website, another two will pop up. Getting shut down can even be a badge of honor for ISIS supporters. Powers under Bill C-51 aren't limited, though, to shutting down communication. Charges could be laid if words or images support or promote terrorism, no matter who's doing the talking. I'm wondering, do you see a young girl, a minor, recruited by ISIS as a victim? You know, when we are dealing with a criminal, we have to change their behavior. When we are dealing with a potential terrorist, we have to change their beliefs. Is it That's hard to see a 13-year-old girl, though, as a, as a terrorist? Well, we, we need to be able to make sure that those beliefs won't translate into action. So pictures like these ones that we found all over the internet showing support for ISIS could result in criminal charges if the bill is passed. Craig Forsees is an expert in Canada's anti-terrorism laws. Is it a given that just because somebody glorifies terrorism or promotes it or, you know, raw raws it on Twitter, that they will be radicalized towards violence? Uh, no, okay, so if that were true, we'd be besieged by terrorist incidences because, of course, cyberspace is full of obnoxious comments. Uh, so there's no close correlation and certainly no causal link between uh, making radicalized statements and then radicalization to violence. Uh, there is no empirical basis to arrive at that conclusion. During our investigation, we discovered young women and girls are being persuaded to post images like this one, found on a Twitter page, the so-called ISIS finger, meaning one state. It's a kind of initiation. Uh, you would say, I believe in you. In this call with our undercover 16 by 9 producer, a man claiming to be a jihadi fighter in Syria asked for the photos, presumably as proof that his soon-to-be bride was loyal to the Islamic State. This is a serious to test your claim. Uh, you, you couldn't imagine, you know, 10, 15 years ago, um, because now the, the, the social media uh, technology and, 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 and the access is very much at your fingertips. Instead of helping, researcher Amarnath Amara Singham says Bill C-51 could force radicalizing women and girls even further underground. And instead of reintegrating them, they kind of become isolated, right? They, they all of now families and communities don't want anything to do with this person. Uh, parents tell their children not to hang out with them anymore uh, because there could be law enforcement attention on their families. Um, and so it kind of has a ripple effect where people become more isolated and families become more isolated in their communities. Is it sort of a lost cause once they're in Syria? It, 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 the, the, the sooner we can intervene in the process, the lesser are the impact for the individual. So you're saying unless we intervene early, once they've left, there's really not a lot to do. That's why we all have a duty. If we are aware of an individual who is being falling into radicalization, to report it to the authority so we, we can stop this from happening and reduce the impact of that, that, uh, that path in which uh, the individual could be uh, going down.
Meantime, ISIS fighters are online, luring young women and girls who are hoping to join in building the new Islamic State. I'll get someone to get, collect you from the airport okay. when you land. And uh, what they'll do is basically, they'll transport you all the way down to the border. And when you cross the border, I'll be waiting for you the other side. And we are continuing the discussion on this story online in a live blog, Sunday, March 15th from 2 to 4 Eastern. To join us, just log on to global16by9.com. We'll be right back.